we have been looking at model predictive control and let me go over some of the ideas model again uh, well we have modified formulation from linear optimal control linear optimal control is technically a formulation over infinite horizon whereas this is a formulation which is over a finite horizon and it keeps changing as a function of time at each sampling instant we are going to solve a constraint optimization problem over a window and this window keeps moving this window keeps sliding in time so that is important so you solve first the problem over window k to k plus p where k is the current instant implement the optimal input move move forward in time reformulate the problem over k plus 1 to k plus p plus 1 so the window size p remains constant and so on so this window keeps sliding in time and as i was giving you analogies uh that this is what actually we keep doing when you when you when you control the system when you drive a car when you drive a cycle or a motorcycle or you know drive your work you actually keep planning only over a horizon and then this window keeps sliding of course uh our brain is much more complex computer than what you can implement so the window in time and space that we can have can be time varying and sometimes you might plan over 100 meters and 10 minutes in future sometimes you might plan only for 3 minutes in future you know brain is amazing we cannot teach a computer to do what a brain can do but at least we can approximate what uh, so proactive constraint management we actually uh do this when you are driving you proactively do the constraint management you make moves that will make sure that the car will not go outside the constraint boundary after some time okay same thing we want to do now we want to have a model which is running on board on a computer parallel to the plant online in real time you are going to do forecasting over the future and you going to check whether the constraints are obeyed or violated by the prediction model by the predicted output okay so uh i have just modified a little bit this concept of uh what is called as control horizon and prediction horizon uh earlier i had talked about input blocking which is a little advanced concept i have moved that to like appendix in the revised and i am introducing a simpler idea called control horizon here uh this is what originally it appeared and this is what is very commonly used the blocking concept which i talked about is little advanced and um, you can understand it maybe later let's uh, take a step backward and understand a simpler concept which is control horizon so what i'm going to do now is that forget about uh, i'm going to do a spe special kind of blocking you can say see i want to plan over the horizon from k to k plus p typically how much how much long you plan you plan this p is chosen based on the settling time of the system what is settling time if you give a step change in the input the time it will take to settle so roughly of course with different inputs the settling time will be different so you take say maximum of the settling time for this to different inputs so you how much you want to forecast into future up to you know uh, why settling time because you know the steady state effect of current input will be felt after the settling time so that much ahead in the future you want to predict so typically this could mean for a let's say if it's a furnace it could mean prediction over 5 hours or 4 hours okay if it is just a if it is just if it's a vehicle it could mean just prediction over 5 seconds it depends upon the system and so typically if you quantify in terms of sampling intervals this would be typically 200 to 200 samples in future okay so it will be about 100 to 200 samples in future that's what you want to predict over okay now as i said these this is the this is one picture which tries to capture everything so these are the future inputs that i am planning okay now since i am going to implement only one move here this one uk okay and discard the optimization results when i move to the next window okay what we do is 
we restrict the degree of freedom into the future in principle we can change or we can uh, treat future inputs up to this point as the manipulated inputs which are available for manipulation we can do that okay but what we do is that gives rise to a large optimization problem okay we want to restrict the decision variables so what we do is we typically allow input to change over first q samples this q could be 4 5 6 a small number and then we assume that after this point the input is held constant at the last value which is here okay so so the blocking i mean i have tried to explain this using a different figure now uh yeah so these are these are the two scenarios where you allow all the future inputs as a decision variables to the optimization problem the other thing is you say that only first five you are allowed to change and after that you keep it constant okay so this first five this this window is called as a control horizon from here to here okay the prediction horizon is the window over which you are predicting the future behavior control horizon is that horizon over which you are allowing manipulated inputs to change after which you hold it constant okay this this control horizon business has come mainly because of from the computation view point you are trying to reduce the degree of freedom for optimization problem if you have to solve a large optimization problem and anyway if you are going to use only one move out of that okay suppose suppose i optimize next 100 input moves and throw 99 and just use one okay uh, then first of all i am formulating a huge problem okay of which i only trust one move okay then uh, the idea is to reduce the dimension well when you reduce the dimension of course your manipulability reduces okay if you give less degrees of freedom okay the way you can shape the future it gets restricted fine but you know there is a trade off between fast computation online because you have to do this if you are doing implementing a predictive controller for a vehicle you may have to do this calculations optimization calculations in fraction of a second okay so in that case you know the smaller dimension optimization problem converges faster so so this this trick is done okay so let's move back uh, again and let's quickly go over the basic elements of mpc one is you have an internal model uh well i i have de developed the formulation using an observer closed loop observer predict predictor you can use all kinds of things you can use open loop observer you can use filter kalman filter you can use leuenberger observer you can use whatever okay so i have developed with one particular way okay so you can you can use a model which is coming from armax uh or bj actually i have uploaded yesterday to show you how it can be done for lqg using both models one using linearized models other using identified models how things will be different i uploaded my code for your perusal so those are image files and you cannot copy from there but you can view what is there if you are able to copy tell me i'll send it uh so then you need a prediction scheme over the future how do you predict over future there are two components of prediction scheme one is you have to use the model into the future to predict future profiles second is you have to realize that the model is never perfect okay so you have to have some scheme for compensating future predictions for planned model mismatch okay so so there are two things planned model mismatch and unmeasured disturbances are always present the model you developed in the beginning of your uh, project is never going to be valid i mean it is roughly roughly okay but not you know perfect model the plant conditions keep changing and anyway you have a non linear real plant is always non linear you are linearized so there are all kinds of approximations okay so uh, you have to have a scheme for compensation for plant model mismatch and then you have to have a scheme for solving it optimally online okay so for that of course linear programming quadratic programming there are very efficient tools available and commercial codes are available and you can use those commercial codes some of them are even public domain 
and uh, okay so we uh, said that the observer we are going to develop using observer here um, and uh, this observer could be developed through any any means it need not be kalman filter it need not be kalman predictor it can be leon burger predictor it can be uh, state realization of armac bj model it can be anything okay uh, then i'm going to use this to do current state estimation xk given k minus 1 is the current state and then i'm going to estimate the current innovation this current innovation will contain the information about model plan mismatch okay unmeasured disturbances if everything is perfect okay then innovation is a white noise but if it is not perfect if the model is different from the plan innovation is not a white noise and we use that signal to compensate for the future prediction so how we do that you do it using this innovation bias approach you filter the innovation okay and then you try to find out what is the non zero mean of this signal this is done using this uh, simple exponential filter this is what i have included now is uh, one minute <laughs> I put this uh, right for unity gain filter. I don't know how it is not there. Some problem with the version. Okay. So what is this unity gain filter? I have just explained this in this one slide. Unity gain filter is simply well in continuous domain uh, a filtered signal y uh, is filtered through a first order filter, simple tau s one plus one. Or if you are more comfortable with uh, a, it will be s plus a, and the numerator will be one upon will be. 1 plus a i think so this is a unity gain filter the gain of this filter is 1 okay so the task of this filter is only to knock off certain frequencies what are those frequencies that will be decided by how you choose this tau okay what does it map it to this particular differential equation or this first order transfer function actually maps to this difference equation this z domain transfer function which is nothing but this filter okay first order filter and the map between this alpha and the time constant you might be more comfortable when it comes to filtering you might be more comfortable thinking in terms of a time constant or a frequency rather than you know discrete time alpha okay so it is easier to work with this uh, tau here and remember this mapping that alpha is equal to exponential minus e by exponential minus t by tau where t is sampling time so this is how you filter a signal okay so this filtering of this signal this is the filtered value so new filtered value is alpha times old filtered value plus 1 minus alpha times the new input which is coming why so y is filtered okay and depending upon how you choose alpha the signal gets filtered through this first order filter and then i have just shown here uh, this first order how it looks so for different values of alpha how does the filtered signal look this blue signal is the original signal without filtering and the other three signals are filtered signals for different values of alpha so this alpha is a kind of a tuning parameter we have to choose that tuning parameter between 0.8 and 0.99 okay and when you do your control lqg or mpc or whatever this particular parameter you will have to tune you will have to choose to get a good behavior okay you can i have given starting guess as 0.8 anywhere between 0.8 to 0.99 you have to try different values it may happen that for higher values the system will start stabilizing for lower values it may not okay so uh okay so uh so after we find out this business then comes you know suppose we are given a future set of manipulated inputs uk uk plus 1 uk plus 2 okay at the moment i have not put those constraints of control horizon and all that i am just taking that you are given all the future inputs for manipulation how will the prediction look like okay so the prediction will look like this first 
the, this z, z k plus 1 is the first prediction. Uh, I am going to correct this using the innovation, filtered innovation and I am going to correct this y predicted also using the filtered innovation. So, this correction here, this brings in, this brings in somehow the effect of unmeasured disturbances, plan model mismatch on the future prediction. Okay. All that I have done is I have recursively used this model. Okay. I have recursively. Main thing is that the first point on the prediction is connected with the observer in the past. This is the connection, this particular statement is the connection between the prediction into the future and observer which is working in over the past. Okay. So, this is where, where you connect. So, initial point for the prediction is same as the last point of the observer. That is what I am saying here. You just see here. I have I have this observer here. I have this observer here. My observer at time k, I predicted estimate of x. Okay. So, I have to start my predictions from the current point. Where, where am I right now in terms of state? I am at x at k given k minus 1. Okay. Okay. So, once I do this matching between the past and the present, okay, then I am going to just recursively use this equation over the future okay, and carry out the predictions. So, a raw implementation of predictive control will just involve a for loop. Okay. A raw implementation will involve a for loop in which first, first this will be the first at you know j equal to 1 this will be done, then this value will be used here see. You do not have to do all this expansion, you just first in the for loop you compute z, z hat k plus 1, use z hat k plus 1 you will get z hat k plus 2, using z hat k plus 2 you will get z hat k plus 3 and so on. Just put it in the for loop you will get the prediction. Okay. For every guess, for every guess how you so how you are going to solve this problem? We have already seen it once in the last lecture as an optimization problem. So, you have to compute for a guess of the inputs, you have to compute the future prediction that you do in a for loop. Then you compute the objective function for the optimization problem and give it to the optimizer, optimizer will do the rest. Okay. So, here what you can do is there is an optimization program in MATLAB if you are going to use is an optimization program called fmincon. Okay. So, constraint optimization program in which you can specify the bounds you can and you have to give a you have to write a function in which the objective function is constructed using model predictions. Once you do that okay, you can implement your model predictive control uh, scheme. So, uh, now I have expressed this in terms now as far as programming is, is concerned I need only this first statement and this statement and this statement and this statement. I have expressed this like this in terms of all the future inputs and all for all the future and and z hat k that is because I wanted to do some interpretation. I said that the prediction p step I had prediction in the future is function of two things. What has happened in the past that information is bought through or three things actually. What has happened in the past that is initial state of the model. Okay. Then all the future inputs that you are going to input moves that you are going to make. Okay. And this will bring in the information about the past disturbances and past model plan mismatch. So, this is a compensation for model plan mismatch. Okay. So, uh, this is this is this is how you this is how you do the predictions okay. um, and this is the interpretation of those predictions and here of course, p is called as a prediction horizon. Now, the next question is that, uh, yeah. Hmm. So that is a guess, no? See, the way optimization works is that you guess, uh, yeah. So you give an initial guess. From that, it will compute the objective function, compute the gradient, and then there are methods to generate new guess from the old guess. Okay. So the way this is going to work is. Each time a guess is generated, you do prediction. Okay. So actually, what you do is 
actually what you do is you uh, you write an write a function in which given a guess you generate the objective function that is your job okay it's job of the optimizer to from the old guess to generate a new guess evaluate the objective function that is job of the optimizer so optimizer will keep generating new guesses till certain criteria that is necessary condition for optimizer is satisfied and then it will terminate the optimization so it's a iterative process okay for every guess optimizer generates i have to construct the prediction evaluate the objective function and give it back to the optimizer okay evaluate the objective function evaluate the constraints and then tell the optimizer the situation whether uh, you are for the given guess whether you are inside the constraint boundary that is that is business of the optimizer okay so you think of an optimizer as a subroutine available to you to which you just supply an objective function okay so what is involved in the objective function given guess of the inputs you carry out predictions over the horizon using those predictions you find out difference between the future set point and the future predictions find the uh, objective function calculation and then give it back to them okay so actually technically what we have done is uh something like this we have done prediction using this kind of a model so done prediction using this kind of a model what we have done is that we have assumed that there is a unknown disturbance this unknown disturbance we have primed at as efk okay and we have assumed that this unknown disturbance remains constant over the horizon okay actually this is called as integrated white noise model okay uh, though i have practical implementation of this integrated white noise model is what i showed you in the previous slides okay but philosophically it means that i am actually doing this i am i am actually solving this plus this equation together whereas the initial condition for this is nothing but the filtered innovation okay so whatever we have done earlier can be written uh, you know conceptually like this so actually what i want to highlight here is that to remove offset or to account for model plot mismatch we have to introduce an integrating element into the controller this integrating element into the controller is introduced artificially and this artificial business comes through this augmented equation okay so this artificial uh, uh, this artificial state epsilon has been introduced into the prediction and then this is used to uh, compensate for model plot mismatch philosophically this is what has happened practically it means of course we have you know this ef coming here if you eliminate all that uh, thing it actually practically it is this but conceptually it means that you have added an integrator how many integrator elements you have added you have added integrating elements equal to number of number of uh, outputs because ef this is the innovation okay so you actually augmented the system with extra states which is equal to number of innovations so number of measurements so that is how you get rid of the offset now constraints on the inputs i am going to talk about this simplified constraints okay not input blocking input blocking i have moved to the end of the uh, slide so this is a simplified constraint you are going to allow you are going to allow only first few moves to be freely changed after that i am going to make a constraint that after q q q plus 1 up to q plus t minus 1 is equal to this okay so first q this q first moves would probably mean only five moves or six moves or six seven moves that is because you know we repeatedly solve the problem okay that's why we make this simplification if you have lot of computing power and if you have uh, you know if there is the computing time is not a constraint then you don't have to put this this is more from a practical view point right so this in the control uh, control uh, mpc terminology this is called as a control horizon typically in industrial implementations this would be 5 6 or 10 and a prediction horizon will be 100 150 so you allow next 10 moves to be chosen freely for the uh, optimizer and of which you implement only one okay and yeah yeah 
this one. So this is where you know, see x is the observer. So I have deliberately kept two notations, one for prediction and one for observer. Observer is dealing with the past. Predictions are, see predictions are for a given guess you will predict that prediction may not happen. Okay, so that's why what I have done. If you move here. my what is see there is a governing equation for the plant dynamic equation okay what is that we are going to use the observer for as a model for prediction okay so i want to use the observer now observer in the past and observer in the future okay i want to keep them separate so that your understanding is cleaner okay so i am going to use two different notations okay so so when i am saying x here when i am saying x so this is my observer so i use this observer to do the current state estimation this is at k i am standing at the kth instant okay i want to estimate the state at the current point and then using this state as a initial point i want to predict into future okay so what i am going to do now is this clear up to this point no this point is clear so now this so this innovation bias that is uh, okay that is fine okay now look at this equation so now i am going to use the same model for future prediction see u is a future input i have not actually made it yet i am just contemplating different inputs okay so suppose i were to implement u k given k what would be the prediction the difference equation will give me i know phi i know gamma i know l i know c okay okay uh, a mistake i have made is that it should be ah uh, here it should be z it should be z here yeah i'll change that i'll i'll correct that it should be z hat k plus 1 should be here okay and then what i'm doing is initial state of this huh see you need zk here to go to zk plus 1 okay where are you going to get that from the observer in the past that is the connection between the prediction and the past okay so there is a there is a error here this should be z hat k plus 1 here so yeah here i have corrected that so here there is a typo okay i'll i'll correct that so you get it now now so once i get this prediction i can use this prediction into the next prediction okay and then i can go you know jumping in or hopping in time in future okay from k plus 1 to k plus 2 k plus 2 to k plus 3 k plus 3 to k plus 4 and i'm going to do this up to k plus p into future ha huh, so actually what i have done if you look carefully when i see this one i am saying that this future future error is equal to ef okay i move to the next next point again what is the future error i do not know okay so what is the best guess for the future error current error okay so that's what that's what i have done so see all these other other signals i am using future you see here but what about the future disturbance can i ever predict future disturbance i can never predict future disturbance okay so i am saying that the best estimate of the future disturbance is the current value of the disturbance okay and then i am going to just use it uh, see even three step i am still using this ef and then if i go p step i am still using ef see all the other things are future but the disturbance estimate is current okay so philosophically what does it mean okay philosophically what does it mean it means that you are making a model which is of this form this model predictions okay in which so you are saying that the future is going to remain constant it is equal to the current disturbance okay so conceptually doing that is equivalent to this model that's what i mean okay these two are one and the same okay from the theory view point it is important to write this actual implementation is what those equations you are not going to you can actually substitute this here you can substitute this here 
and get rid of this equation. Okay, but that is all fine. But philosophically, you have done this. Okay, philosophically, you have augmented the system with extra integrating states. Okay, that's what. So then I have this future manipulated variables, which uh, I have some degrees of freedom, um, and then I of course have constraints. I can see unlike all other control schemes, why manipulative control schemes have become so popular? Because all the other control schemes, you just come up with one gain matrix. Okay, it is difficult to or one gain matrix or one transfer function or control the transfer function or whatever it might be. You cannot systematically handle constraints. Here you are solving an optimization problem, so tell the optimizer that don't choose a move which is outside the bounds. It's so simple. Okay, you are actually doing time domain predictions, so you can actually say that don't choose a move that will let the predicted output to go beyond. Okay, so it's explicit. You know your control problem. As you think about it, you can transfer it into an optimization problem. It's very easy. You can give bounds on the inputs. And real systems have always bounds on the inputs, and all the analytical control theory cannot deal with it systematically. Okay, so what do you do there? You know, when you are actually suppose you were to implement your LQG controller with bounds, all that you do is that you know you put an if statement. If LQG asks you to implement a move which is higher than what is feasible, then don't implement it. You set it equal to. Okay, so that is called uh, you know. Uh, uh, it's called uh, reset wind-up mechanism, but those are ad hoc measures. You know, you are putting if if then else statement. That's not math, right? Whereas here, when you put it as an optimization problem, you are actually solving using formal mathematical techniques. Okay, so you can constrain delta u. You can see many times you cannot change. You cannot open a wall from. Say 50% opening to 100% opening in one second. Okay, or you cannot change a stepper motor from, you know, beyond a certain rate. So there are always physical limits, and the controller should know that there are physical limits. When you just put a gain time something, if the error increases, the delta u increases. That doesn't happen here. You actually can constrain the inputs. Okay. So I was just trying to pictureize this control horizon, input constraints, and all that. then i talked about last time about this future set point trajectory okay how do you want to go from the current point to the final point okay like you are cruising an aircraft and then whether you want to you know go very slowly to the new set point new height or whether you want to shoot very quickly and go up it depends upon application and you can actually you can actually decide a future trajectory which starts from the current point and takes you to the final set point so this is this can be done using a first order filter and then different values of first order filter will give you if you don't put any filter it means the set point trajectory is this step if you put a filter it means you are taking it gradually okay if you do not put any filter if you say that uh, the set point at the next instant should be equal to this set point okay if there is no filtering it is like a step function if there is a filtering then you are taking it gradually okay so it depends this is a tuning parameter this is not this is you can choose this uh, then of course i talked about steady state target business in lq linear quadratic optimal control implementation same thing you have to do here if you want to uh, do uh, except that i have put it as a, this is an optimization problem because <laughs> it is quite likely that your set point may not be reachable within the bounds Okay, so then you have to come up with a target which is not equal to the set point, but as close as possible to the set point. Okay, some operator might give a set point which is not reachable. Okay, within the within the input bounds, so that you have to modify the target problem here a little bit. When you implement uh, MPC, you don't have to do this target business. Forget about. Uh, of course, if the unconstrained solution exists, that will be same as. what you get from lq part that is not different that is one and the same so what is this constraint mpc formulation constraint mpc formulation consists of an objective function the objective function 
as three terms. One term, this first term is distance of the predicted output from the set point trajectory. Okay, so what I'm what I'm trying to say is that minimize the distance between. This is sum of the square of distance. This is error transpose W error. What is this error? This error is set point trajectory minus the predicted output. Okay, so I want to minimize the difference between the future set point trajectory which I have given and the future predictions. That is that is done over P. you put one more term on the final terminal point okay you put one more term on the terminal point this terminal point term is this is between the target state okay the target state business now now that we are going to implement lqoc you will be clear to you target state business so you take it the system as close as possible to the target state so these two will make sure that you know you are uh, you are cruising or you are doctoring the future behavior as close as possible to the desired trajectory you want to do it such that no excessive moves are made in the future so you don't do it by you know making large input moves so that is handled through this input weighting okay you you uh, put a weighting on rate of change of input okay typically into your controller so delta u is um, difference between two subsequent uh, i think this term needs to be modified now because now there is no input blocking so i'll change this one term also this one term needs to be modified okay what are the constraints of course model equations is one of the constraints set to the model equations okay every time you give a guess the optimizer has to compute predictions using this equations okay that is uh, and bounds on the outputs you can bound the future outputs this is something completely different from what other controllers can do you can bound the future predicted outputs okay and then of course input bounds input rate bounds everything you can this is an optimization problem i have given you one way of formulating optimization problem as quadratic norm optimization problem somebody might say why why here this is two norm square right why two norm square why not one norm why not infinite norm you can use infinite norm you can use one norm you can use all kinds of okay you can use all kinds of uh, in fact people use people also use uh, mpc objective function as a profit maximization so you can have a very open problem where you know the optimization problem is uh, make decide the future such that the profit is maximized okay so conventionally of course you do this optimization business there are some more important things which come in in mpc which are not there in the other i want to highlight this through this okay sometimes sometimes you don't want to control an output precisely at a set point okay you don't mind if it fluctuates within a bound okay so for example you know some concentration or some you know temperature of in some reactor is very very important for the product purity but the level inside the reactor it need not be exactly at you know 7.2 meters it can be between 7.5 and 7 meters okay so what i can tell the controller here is that don't control level at the set point as long as it is within the bounds it's fine with me okay so this is called zone control variable and this is something different about mpc you need not give a set point on a particular output you can just say that maintain it within a bound okay which is more practical in many situation so you are actually allowing giving freedom to the controller not to not to uh, take certain outputs exactly to certain values but allow them float within the bound so all these things are possible with this okay so the controller specification is so transparent and so straight forward from what you think see if you ask a uh, Uh, operator or even a control engineer as you go there and say translate your controller requirements into a frequency domain design criteria most of the uh, you know popular techniques in control multiple control of frequency domain very difficult to translate that that is on the case here okay what is the bound on the input you know what is the bound on the input what is the rate at which you can change you know what is the rate you can change okay what is the physical bound on the predicted output you know what it is 
So all these things can be very transparently, you know, converted into a controller specification. Okay, it can be flexible. It can be flexible. If if a frequency domain controller is to be redesigned, you need an expert who understands frequency domain, who can who will go back do the calculations. Here it's an optimization problem which is solved at every instant, right? Suppose I formed, I had one set of constraints today. I can change them tomorrow. So this particular formulation, predictive control formulation, is very very flexible. Nothing more flexible probably you can think of. Okay. So uh, how do you compute this uh, term here? Uh, w infinity. You know, you can show that if you do it using solving the uh, Lyapunov equation, then you know you can guarantee some stability properties. So I'm not getting into that uh, theoretical aspects, but just believe me right now that how to compute W infinity is you can solve this uh, Lyapunov equation and get W infinity. Uh, well, this has been implemented over the years and found to be stable and working and robust and all that. Of course, as you know, academicians are always bothered about proving. Properties, and then there has been a lot of work on uh, uh, using Lyapunov stability theory to establish theoretical foundations of why it works. Well, it works, you know, uh, <laughs> it works, and it works in thousands of cases. Now we are trying to satisfy ourselves by saying that well, our old good old theory of Lyapunov works here, and uh, I'm not uh, given those all those details. It gets a little bit more tricky to show uh, stability, even though nominal stability. Maybe I'll upload uh, some uh, some notes later, just for your reference. Uh, well, then, how, what do you do? Of course, implement this in moving horizon formulation. Uh, you only implement the first move, optimal move, and you throw the rest, and then you move on and reformulate the problem again, resolve it, and so that is the moving horizon implementation. Um, Now, uh, are there efficient ways of solving this? Well, the raw optimization problem which I discussed is uh, can take a lot of time to solve. Uh, there is something called quadratic programming. If you have done a course on optimization, you would probably know about quadratic programming. Uh, quadratic programming can solve the same. You have to reconvert this problem into a quadratic programming problem. That is algebra. I'll just show you those equations, but I'm not going to go detail into those equations. That is just a lot of algebra. You know, you patiently sit and keep doing this equation, rearrange all the equations into certain forms, and then uh, you can solve it very efficiently. So, the nice thing about multiplicative control is that it can be used for a system which is non-square. The number of inputs, number of outputs, need not be equal. There can be more outputs than the inputs. There can be more in out. There can be more. Uh, you know, outputs and the inputs. There can be more inputs than the outputs. They can be equal. They can be whatever. Okay, doesn't matter. Same ideas, same optimization formulation works for any kind of input-output uh, mapping. Uh, so as I said, when the number of outputs are more than the number of inputs, you have to give these zone variables. You cannot uh, maintain all the outputs at the desired set point. So there are some, but this this can be predicted through theoretical. What is this quadratic programming business? I'll just briefly mention it. I'm not going to go uh, into it too too much deep detail. The details are given in the notes. A mathematical uh, constant optimization problem is called as a quadratic program when it is of this form. Okay. So the optimization problem that we talked about just now, multiplicative control problem, can be transformed to this this form. Okay. The U here. Are the future input moves? H is a complex matrix of phi, gamma, c, and all that. You will, and then this F is another vector, and this U is again the future input. So if you have this quadratic equation as an objective function, okay, subject to these bounds, a U is less than or equal to b, then this is called as a quadratic programming problem, and these quadratic programming problem can be solved, you know, very very quickly in polynomial time. To be precise in mathematical terms, uh, they can be solved in fractions of a second. So, if, for example, if you do this 
exercise that you use MATLAB's fmincon, which is a constrained optimization problem. I think it is successive quadratic programming or some such thing. If you use the MATLAB traditional constraint optimizer, and if you use quadratic programming of MATLAB, there is a MATLAB program called quadprog, which does quadratic programming, then quadprog is 10 times faster than the normal optimizer. Okay. And of course, for online implementation, when you want to solve one optimization problem each sampling instant, you better do very fast computing. Okay. So, this transformation of the original problem into quadratic problem is desirable. Of course, when you do your assignment, do not do this, do not get into this. You do it as simple, uh, you know, write a for loop, like write the prediction equations. Do it in a raw way when you do it your uh, assignment. But uh, actually, the real time implementation, you would be using quadratic programming. Okay. So, you have to transform the original problem into this kind of a problem and uh, uh, there are very efficient QP codes available commercially or even on public domain and uh, you can use them to uh, you know, solve your problem, very complex problem, very large scale problem. So, this, this controllers I will show you, they might have you know 10,000 decision variables and you can solve them in a few seconds if you use these efficient codes. So, how do you do this? Of course, uh, you know you, uh, well I am, what I am going to do here is develop, uh, just show you very quickly how to transform the problem into QP problem. I am going to neglect right now the terminal target state business, but that can be included. I am just removed it because to keep the algebra simple. So, do not think that uh, it is, it cannot be done with that. So, what you do is you define a vector of all the future inputs stacked one below each other. Okay. So, this u, this u future f is all the future inputs stacked one below each other. This y future f is all the future predictions stacked one below each other. Okay. And then all those prediction equations I am going to stack below each other and write one giant equation. Y future is some matrix into the initial state plus some matrix into all the future inputs. Okay, plus some matrix into E f. So, what are these matrices S x, S u and S e? So, these of course, if you sit and you know write all those equations one below each other and then take u common. Okay. So, to the algebra you can find those matrices. So, those matrices will turn out to be some huge matrices. Okay. So, this, this matrix S u will have dimension equal to number of outputs into number of prediction horizons. So, suppose your number of outputs are 5 and prediction horizon is 100, this matrix will be 500 cross whatever, uh, number of inputs times the control horizon. So, uh, suppose the number of inputs are 5 and uh, control horizon is uh, 10, so it will be 500 cross 50 matrix, it's a huge matrix and then doing these matrices in MATLAB and all is not difficult, 500 cross matrix is uh, the styles play in MATLAB now. So, this matrix is often called as dynamic matrix and uh, if you observe carefully and if you know what are impulse response coefficients from your previous understanding of system theory, then actually this matrix consists of all the system impulse response coefficients of the system and uh, it was conventionally called as in MPC literature this is called as a dynamic matrix of the system. So, basically you have written the system in terms of three things, all the future predictions stacked into one is equal to one matrix into all future inputs and these two matrices which bring in the effect of past state and past disturbances. Okay. So, you have written was one all the p state predictions clubbed into one giant equation, one giant matrix equation. Then you can uh, write your MPC problem in terms of this giant vectors. Okay. So, huge uh, matrix and then you know doing some algebra you convert this into a, uh, so there is a mapping between all those matrices and so um, this is just a, this is just a, a lot of patience uh, and you know you can convert though all those equations into this complex equation, nothing uh, great about it. So, basically you have transformed the problem into this quadratic problem. Okay. 
if there were no constraints if there were no constraints this quadratic problem can be solved analytically if there were no bounds on the input if there were no constraints then what is the what is how do you solve this what is the necessary condition for optimality the gradient is equal to 0 and hessian should be positive definite of course the gradient equal to 0 if you do for this particular system then the solution is this okay solution turns out to be this so and then if you transform this solution if you transform this solution okay if you see this f vector has x at k given k minus 1 e efk and all that okay you can rearrange this solution unconstrained solution you can rearrange it into this form doing suitable algebra you can rearrange it in this form okay why i am showing you this is because i want to point out that mpc actually is a state feedback controller see here uk is gx times negative state feedback controller the same it's a it's a form of a state feedback controller design okay unconstrained mpc will turn out to be a state feedback controller constrained mpc is a state feedback controller but not in a closed form unconstrained you can show it as a closed form okay if you are doing unconstrained solution okay then you don't have to uh, you know solve optimization problem every time you just compute these matrices gu gx ge and and then just multiply you will get the solution okay so uh, there is nothing uh, so you get what i'm saying so this unconstrained mpc is actually is a form of a state feedback control law okay and then you can uh, of course this unconstrained uh, mpc you will not really be using typically in reality uh, this is only to give you insight that actually mpc is a form of a state feedback controller in reality when you use mpc you will use with the constraint at least you will have input bounds if nothing else the bounds are always used yeah which one yeah oh, the difference is the finite horizon this is a finite horizon problem whereas lqg is a infinite horizon problem so now what see here in lqg here you are able to give constraints on delta u okay so this is then you know you have a very nice handle on uh, model plan mismatch so it is it is not too different if you were If you ask me if I have to implement an uh, uh, you know a scheme which is uh, uh, unconstrained, I don't see too much advantage over LQG. I would then implement LQG. Why go for okay? Finite horizon LQG does it give closed form solutions? I don't know. This this can be viewed as a finite horizon LQG. Unconstrained MPC is like finite horizon LQG. It's a form of finite horizon LQG. with idea of moving horizon see lqg doesn't have idea of moving horizon okay so so basically uh, the idea is that this original problem can be recast as a qp problem and then you can actually solve it as very very efficiently okay so um yeah one can do uh, of course i i have developed one way of doing mpc using this you know innovation bias you can do state augmentation and then formulate mpc there are i mean mpc has been a very rich area almost 30 years of research in this area now Uh, there are so many ways of doing it. I just showed you one possible way, which well, I I like, which uh, it's more of personal taste. Uh, I have done it using closed loop observer, but originally it was not done using closed loop observer. Originally it was all done using open loop observer. So originally all these methods could be used only for open loop stable systems. Now of course you don't have to do all that. You can uh, then. Uh, of course you can uh, i have done it using kalman predictor but uh, i just wanted to note that that is not a restriction it can be done using any any form so there are different tuning parameters you can choose the set point filter trajectory 
you can choose the robustness filter this innovation bias filter that you can tune then you can tune the control horizon selection horizon okay you can actually set the delta u moves so all these are tuning parameters and then these tuning parameters are very transparent meaning in terms of uh, um, in terms of performance they are very very transparent meaning so typically prediction horizon you choose between 60 and 100 control horizon is between 5 and 10 these are uh, from industrial implementations i'm just giving some numbers which are you can give zones instead of giving set points so all kinds of uh just to show you one example this is a uh, problem uh, from which is floated by the shell uh, refinery so uh, i want to control uh, three set points there is a there is some some uh, heavy oil which is being separated into lighter products and heavier products okay this is one of the uh, typical operations in the refining so uh the feed is coming here at the bottom and uh, the steam is being injected here at the bottom so i can uh, manipulate the flow the 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 top draw that is the flow rate here i can manipulate the flow rate out here this is the feed which is coming in okay and then i can manipulate the heat input here okay this is called in this called u3 is bottom reflux duty this is nothing but the heat input here to this heat exchanger and i can manipulate this product rate i can manipulate this side product rate okay uh there are two disturbances some part of the liquid is taken it is subcooled and put it back same thing is done here now this cooling fluid for this is coming from some somewhere else so these two are actually disturbances to the system okay if you don't understand the physics don't worry basically as a control engineer i have three uh end point means purity i want to control the purity of the product here i want to control the purity of the product here okay and i want to control the temperature at this point okay just look at it as a black box three things two product compositions one temperature i have measurements available for the two product compositions and the temperature i can manipulate three inputs the top draw i can manipulate uh, this this uh flow rate here i can manipulate this flow rate i can manipulate the heat input three inputs three outputs two disturbances okay this particular system has large time delays it's a very difficult system to control it has very heavy interactions okay so it's a sorted as a challenge problem by the shell refinery for for people who work in control and uh, they have given different they have given this model and then you can convert it into a state space model into simulation and so on they have also specified the input rate constraints input constraints everything they have given as a description of the problem okay so they have said that the input should not cross limits of plus or minus 0.5 disturbances will not cross plus or minus 0.5 at any at any control move should not be more than 0.05 okay so designing an lqg controller which will make sure that this happens is not possible okay you will have will have trouble so uh, or even a pid controller or you cannot design you can enforce as a you know ad hoc measure that if it gives you higher then don't use it and discard but uh there are constraints on the output okay it just says that the y3 need not be controlled at the set point y3 can be above minus 0.5 they have given everything in terms of scale variables so we do not know physical variables uh and then they have said that y1 should be between plus or minus 0.5 this is the constraint so you have to operate the system under these constraints okay so uh, i have developed a mpc controller for this system using 40 sampling uh, instance i uh, control horizon is 5 the model is i have done the same thing that you have done in your course i took this as a plant then i injected the inputs okay uh i use system identification toolbox develop a state space model so i am treating this this plant as a black box okay i am generating data using it to develop a prediction model that prediction model i have used for controlling i am going to compare my performance with three pid controllers okay and what i want to show you is that 
three well tuned pid controllers cannot uh, manage this system so well as a model plate tube controller can model plate tube controller is a multivariable controller with loose constraints it's a very very advanced controller as compared to three pid controllers it's like three drivers in the car you know who do not know about each other so so i have three controllers which so this is the um, so you can see here this black line is the pid controller this here and this black line i have given a set point change here okay the mpc controller very quickly settles this blue line is the mpc controller okay black line is the pid controller pid controller takes ajax to settle you know almost 12 to 15 hours mpc settles within 5 hours okay the same thing is here these two set points i have changed okay uh here also this blue is mpc which settles within 5 hours pid takes ajax to settle okay so same thing is true when i make a reverse change okay so mpc in typically you know it it takes you to from one set point to the other set point very quickly because it's a multivariable controller okay it avoids you don't have to do anything for especially for avoiding multivariable interactions the model itself is a multivariable model it knows about interactions and the planning of the inputs is done simultaneously so the input profiles are completely different of mpc and pid okay so what about the regulatory case i have given a step change in the input disturbances and then uh, they have also given as a part of the description they have also given what disturbance you should include and all that so you get uh, this uh, improved disturbance rejection in using mpc uh so this is a step disturbance which was given i am just showing you here here that it, it gives completely decoupled response when i changed when i change one set point the other two set points the other two outputs i have now introduced drifting disturbances earlier i had cut off wk white noise business here just to show you clean behavior now i am doing simulations here with unmeasured disturbances measurement noise everything included okay what i want to show here is that when i change one set point other two variables nothing happens they are just as if they are when i change this set point this variable and this variable are more or less controlled except a small blip here so it gives a kind of a decoupled response as if the other loop doesn't exist in fact there is no loop there is one controller which is looking at all three things simultaneously so this mpc is much more uh, uh, you know and then of course uh, you can uh, do better disturbance rejection what i have told you is just just basics you know there is lot lot and lot more literature on how to uh, work with this mpc controllers how to improve their performance robustness all kinds of things um well uh, as control engineers we should bother about nominal stability and uh, one approach is to uh, formulate so called infinite horizon problem and then impose a constraint that a state constraint that x k plus p equal to 0 and then you can establish stability under the apno framework i have given the references towards the end if you are interested in pursuing that then otherwise there is a approach which called as introduce contraction constraints into the mpc formulation what has been shown is that you can construct the apno function directly using mpc objective function okay so you can actually prove stability using uh, the mpc objective function itself so i am not going to get into that uh, so you can uh, you know uh, this paper by muske and rawlings 1990 so there are two papers one in uh, ieee uh, transactions of automatic control and other one is aicit journal both of them are seminal papers i have given uh, references in the end uh, they will they this this particular paper sorted out most of the theoretical issues associated with mpc so they uh they are considered to be very and it put it into the state space framework lqg framework and so details you can see that basic idea is that you know you put this constraint that xk plus p is equal to 0 so you bring the system to the zero state after some time if you put that constraint then you can prove the apno stability if a feasible solution exists for this problem then the apno stability can be proved and then how do you bring in robustness 
into the system and and so on so there are uh, there are already many many commercial products and i'm hoping that uh, dr jagish dev will talk about the one such product so i'm trying to organize this lecture uh, after the exams are over and those of you who are here should attend that lecture so uh, this is a from a survey paper machine and badgewell i uploaded this paper in moodle if you are interested so uh, and and these companies there are many such companies which actually implement this controllers in india they want people who are trained who know about predictive control uh, system identification threat estimation and there is dearth of people who know this so these controllers are very much there not just globally these controllers are here now being implemented uh, uh, ask a friend uh, uh, so um, this is a survey from shin and bajal paper where this was implemented uh, you can see that uh, it has been implemented in refining petrochemicals pulp and paper air and gas utility mining metallurgy food processing aerospace and defense applications at 2003 were less i am sure now they are exponentially grown see this is this this is changing with the changing speed of microprocessors and computing possibility what 10 years back you had age old computers now you can almost say that and what what is available now on your mobile probably you could do on a big desktop 10 15 years back so uh, things have moved very very fast so you can this has been used in automotive applications robotics as i said uh, uh, the latest thing i heard about was using it on google google is hiring people with okay you want a google job you could go with audit predictive control background and then they would like to hire you you can do prediction models for uh, you know uh, how see you you have to allocate resources okay of computers to service to the customer demand and those are stochastic uh, disturbances and you can develop a time series model do predictions forecasting and then do resource allocation okay so there are so many problems ultimately predictive control is not only for process plant it is for anything that where you can develop a model do forecasting over a future horizon and then do allocation so it's just and then you implement your move only for let's say next 10 minutes you take a call for reallocating after 10 minutes so your prediction horizon could be you know some 2 hours or 3 hours into the future you can develop a model on the fly data is coming you can adapt the model using time series approaches develop the model on the fly do predictions uh what is the largest application of mpc how many outputs controlled and how many inputs manipulated okay that's there in the canada in, uh, in one of the refineries in canada largest one is 600 outputs and 283 inputs 603 outputs and 283 inputs the huge controller well um my cousin happened to work on this controller he is btech from iit bombay and he works in a control company in canada uh so he was telling me that the model for this particular plant is like a book if you have to <laughs> look at the transfer function you have to scan a book because it's a huge model it's a it's a transfer function model or whatever a model which is dmc they have really developed a transfer function kind of a model which is uh, 600 cross 283 inputs matrix and to look at the step response itself is a trouble and then to fix which part of the model is bad his 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 work was to fix which part of the model is bad which is pretty tough uh then honeywell application largest application they had implemented in 2003 was 225 outputs and 85 inputs and controllers with you know 30 40 outputs and 20 inputs is common and now actually invensys or rosemont gives you an mpc uh, you know shelf of the shelf module microprocessor based module where you can do five input five output control so basically you should know how to develop a model the key thing is if you develop a model prediction model and uh, you can get going uh, multi level controller so this is 2003 data and in nine years i am sure this just they are not this is a very closely guarded technology 
not too much thing is available on the open literature because these controllers would cost in crores these are not cost these are not cheap controllers implementing them maintaining them you need specialists who have done advanced process control course and uh, you you have to have you know the cost of these controllers is very high that has been one of the criticism of this thing that you need a specialist see a pid controller uh, now doesn't need a specialist to implement but that's not the case with mpc so still that's a limitation it's a limitation that you need um, but then we are in business because you need a specialist to implement this and you can see here this figure speaks for itself this is before advanced process control which means mpc was implemented and after mpc was implemented so this these two control outputs are all over the place before it was implemented and this is the industrial data okay and when they implemented mpc controller this this the control output is just hugging the set point don't worry about what what part of it is you know this visually this figure communicates what it can do in a real real industrial plant okay uh well there are many many things you need a we have, we have developed it using linear models okay linear models have limitations and then you can actually do everything using non linear models so uh one can actually this linear models can be developed when there is a plant which is operating at a point okay when there is something which is continuously in transition like an aircraft you cannot have one linear model which describe your dynamics so you have to have modifications and there are several several modifications so there is you can use i used for those state space models to explain you can use non linear first principle models to do mpc okay and no not again new there are already products which do it because there are at least seven or eight products in the market which actually sell mpc based on first principle models okay developing non linear models is a research problem and even recently uh, Uh, our group here we had funding from honeywell to develop non linear first uh, identified models non linear black box models for some plants so that you can use data driven models you can use neural networks you can use all kinds of uh, you know support vector machines uh, so there's a lot of research on uh, how to develop control relevant mpc relevant models for so i'm just skipping this not going too much into deep so you can have generally a model which is current state is some nonlinear function of past states and past inputs you can have nonlinear arx models you can have nonlinear bj models there are all kinds of uh, and then of course mpc formulation is the same you have optimization problem formulation subject to constraints on inputs outputs state equations modeling equations it becomes a nonlinear optimization problem much more complex to solve and then how you can solve it in real time is a big problem okay so if you know your maths while well, you are in business you have just an example of uh, this plant this plant again the model equations are available if you write to them they will give you simulator and then i have included the case study of this controller which we have implemented one mtech student had implemented this controlling this there are six outputs and 10 inputs to be simultaneously controlled and the problem is for example to move from one uh what they call as one product grade to other product grade okay so there are some there is a product called g which we don't know what g is as is one company has not told what it is but uh and then they have given the constraints how you know output should be constrained how input should be constrained what are the bounds everything is given so this is a problem defined like a benchmark problem you have a new way of solving mpc you implement on this and show them that it works so Uh, we are taking it from 50% product split of g to 10% product split of g it's a major transition of the system from one operating condition to the other operating condition and we are able to manage it using our algorithm that we developed uh, this mtex student developed so the, so you are going from certain product purity to certain other product purity certain product rate to certain other product rate and so on and this is done by simultaneously moving all the set points to the new point using all the 10 inputs simultaneously so subject to the all those constraint rates and all that this is using some time varying non linear models we had developed and so uh 
So you can use MPC using all kinds of models. You can use data driven models. You can use mixture of mechanistic models and data driven models. You can use only mechanistic models. Depending upon what kind of, uh, you know, what level of confidence you have in your model. And so what I just described is just a tip of the iceberg. Just, uh, just experimental work. I'll just show you visually what difference it can make. So this is a experimental setup which some of you are simulating right now in the in the assignment. I have uh, two uh, heat inputs as my manifold inputs and one flow rate, cold water flow rate. I am mixing hot water and cold water here. I want to control temperature, temperatures of these two tanks and level here. So there are three controlled outputs, four manifold inputs and uh, I want to, so there are two disturbances. Uh, what happens, just visually see that if I do not put a controller, the temperature is drifting, this is open loop behavior, the level keeps drifting, the temperature keeps drifting, temperature is changing here almost by 6 degrees, here by 2 degrees in the se second tank and the level changes by 6 centimeters. This is a tank of 15 centimeters, 6 centimeter level drift, is a huge drift for this particular tank. Okay. If I put MPC, I can just control it you know, within plus or minus 0.5. This is a nonlinear MPC implementation actually on the lab. Okay. So again, part of a PhD work where we are developing some nonlinear time series models to show that how they can be made to work on the real setup. So these are inputs and outputs. There are products, nonlinear model predictive control. There are already products in the market last 10 to 15 years. And most of the major companies into who are already into linear model based predictive controllers are also into nonlinear model based predictive controllers. So these are again 2003 survey and I am, no survey has come recently. So this is, I am sure uh, there is much more work now, many more commercial products which actually, that time uh, these were the actual implementations of nonlinear MPC. Now it has grown exponentially. So this is a very, 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 very flexible control scheme. Okay, one of the most uh, potent and very, one of the schemes which has, which is a major commercial success. Okay. So, no other controller, multivariable, non-linear or linear controller, which has spread so much. So, now, uh, of course, in control, uh, all the control uh, uh, journals, there is always, there are always a lot of papers on non-linear model predictive control. There are special uh, workshops or number of books which have come out on this. And uh, the main thing is that if you know this, it, you are in for a very good job uh, because doing this, uh, knowing this technology is, uh, there are many, many current research directions. You can work on uh, how do you model unmeasured disturbances. You can work on robustness. You can work on fault diagnosis. People have used this MPC now for all kinds of things. They are using it for scheduling planning. Okay, scheduling planning of, you know, uh, to deal with the market conditions. Okay, you want to plan the production over next two month horizon. Production planning conventionally was never a control engineer's job, but with MPC, you know, you have a moving horizon idea, you have a prediction model, you are in for a business for, you know, and your decisions are what to produce where. The manipulated inputs concept has to change. And the time slots, you know, how much you produce for which time, where, and so on. There are huge applications on those who like embedded control work. How to embed an MPC on a chip? How to embed a state estimator on a chip? Okay, all these things are very, very fast and MPC. If you like maths, how do you make uh, a non-linear optimization program which can very quickly solve uh, something online. So each one of them actually has helped me to define uh, PhD problems. So somebody has worked on fast NMPC, somebody has worked on disturbance modeling. So I'm just listing here my PhD problems. And I have given a lot of references here. Uh, the, there are excellent books which give you uh, exposure to MPC. And also linear quadratic optimal control. These are some of the nice 
articles which have appeared and which can help you uh, get going if you want to go uh, working into this direction. So uh, I think with that, uh, let me close this set of lectures. Well, uh, very frankly, uh, I have taught this course four or five times, but this batch I I really enjoyed teaching you guys and you girls. Not this. <laughs> so it was fun because you kept asking questions and it helped me to uh, you know change my notes all the time. Particularly thanks to Venkatesh and Saurav who kept uh, bugging me all the time. So it's good. It's good to have a class which is so responsive. So. I had fun, I know, I hope you also learned something. So, main thing is that do this assignment, more than those exam problems which are not going to be more than 2 cross 2 matrices, okay. So, I cannot do in an exam, uh, I can't give you big, at the most I will give you some 3 cross 3 matrices, but you know, you will learn only when you actually dirty your hands in programming, okay. Now, some of those programs you have never developed, so that's why I have put my programs for your reference, okay. So, a little complex. Other thing which you should do that uh, when you are developing this control scheme in simulation or in reality, you should never, never attempt to do a grand integration, divide and rule, okay. Take one component, test it separately, okay. Then take 1 plus 2, test it separately, test them together like that. So first develop observer, test it in open loop, no controller, okay. Then develop a controller, test it with perfect state feedback, no observed states. Then and test it with linear plant simulation. If it is working, then you go to the observer base on the linear plant simulation. So one by one, one by one you should relax. Even now, after working in this area for so many years, if I have to start a new thing, I start. There is no, there is no way you can test your program by a grand integration of something. You take each component, test it separately, then you know integrate. That what you would do if you were to do a hardware project, same thing you have to do here, okay. You, any software when you are developing, test each component separately and then slowly integrate them into a bigger problem, okay. Then you know where you are going wrong, otherwise it becomes very difficult to just look at the notes and say, yeah, I am going to write this one program, you know, it never works, never works like that. Okay, so now uh, just to uh, wind up. Uh, this is my perspective of advanced process control. I think uh, most of the control books or uh, courses start by assuming that there is a model already. I don't think that is correct. I think you should start from data, okay, and then come up with the control algorithm. So from data to model to observer to controller, okay. So even though the development here, a lot of it for MPC is based on linear, looks like it based on the linearized first principle model. How to do it using identified model? I have already uploaded my notes yesterday of how to implement LQ, LQG using identified model. Okay, same thing would hold for MPC using identified models. Okay, so I'll maybe I'll add that one bit and put it. So with that, you know, you have a complete viewpoint from data to control. Okay, and if you uh, go somewhere and happen to implement this, you should be in business from. Uh, okay, so uh, thanks for your uh, nice interactions and hope uh, we will meet again uh, after the exam. I am going to uh, organize this lecture by Dr. Jagushte about real time implementations of MPC. It might be on his convenience, uh, could be on a Saturday. So it could be on 5th, 5th is a Saturday I think. So I will ask him and then organize, it will be in the department, we are not going to record it. Sir. Okay.